What's up guys? It's Anton Fausto from the Mom and Son Podcast. Recently, we announced that we'll be shifting to a monthly podcast instead of the weekly format that we've been doing for the past year and a half. Again, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting us all the way. And you guys know naman that I've been interviewing a bunch of people on the Mom and Son Podcast a lot of times already. But then now, I will be pushing for that a little more now. The FQ Mom will be doing her own thing. I'll sort of be focusing on doing this own thing of mine. And before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and huge thank you to Kino Papa. He's the guy who made the music you're listening to right now. He also makes the beats and the music to the vlog of Colin Sago on YouTube. He makes great basketball content. You guys should check it out. Uh, so yeah, thank you again, Q, for doing this. And I hope you guys are going to learn something from this. I hope you can relate with whatever uh, my brain gets to think of for this series. Again, here is the Quarantuhan series. I hope you guys enjoy. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. My name is Anton Faso, and here we are with the first episode okay, for the Quarantuhan series. We'll be talking to a bunch of personalities, picking their brains, and asking them the most random of questions about anything under the sun. My first guest, uh, you know what? He's known all over the country. If you have a tito or a neighbor who has held a basketball, chances are you've seen him play. Uh, he's a three-time UAB Men's Basketball Finals MVP. Ang Westbrook ng Pinas, one of the brightest young stars in the Philippine basketball scene. But to be honest, probably not the brightest in accounting. Now I'm just kidding. Please welcome Shirley Ravenna. Wow. <laughs> no, I just had wow. to. I just had to. <laughs> so you had to do that. Huh? No wonder. I mean, like that's the only uh, sub, uh, class that I dropped out of. We were supposed where... to be classmates. Yeah. We were supposed to be classmates. So 30 and I were actually blockmates. Uh, time in in Ateneo. Anyway, thirty year in the car right now. Just tell everybody where where are you headed to. Uh, I'm on my way to uh, my my workout, my first workout of the day, mm-hmm. uh, in Rana Arts. Yeah, you can see the 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 commitment and the dedication. Tagagang training all the time. I have a question though. Under your cap, is the hair still pink? Yeah, you already know. Oh, okay. What what's the story behind that? Honestly, I was just really bored. It, it turned out to be a good option for me to actually do it. Uh-huh. Uh, just because, you know, that has something to do with marketing also. Like, I didn't know that I would get more attention with pink hair. Uh-huh. It, it definitely just meant na it's a new phase in my life, I guess. Mm-hmm. You never thought now while you're playing basketball, it's going to be easier to spot you. Because there are times where you can confuse the defense if... Kung... Medyo same yung kulgay ng buhok mo. Wala naman, okay lang. Want all the, want yeah, all the attention. You can just spot me from, from afar. Definitely. Uh-huh. But, That's e- easier uh, for the outlet. Anyway, so congratulations, by the way. So you, you've signed a one-season deal uh, with San and Neo Phoenix in Japan. So just just share with us nga. How did you come up with that decision? Bakit Japan out of all countries? Uh, well, there was a lot of factors. Actually, proximity was one of them. It's close to the Philippines where my family is. And, um, and I just, I'm doing something that I've never done before. I've never left the country for over a month. But now I'm actually going to live in one. Mm-hmm. It's a very uh, drastic change in my life. So definitely you have to include proximity there just so, you know, whenever you get homesick or lonely, like your family's there to uh, uh, visit you or your friends. And also, it's close to the Philippines, so I can hopefully, like, you know, train with the national team as well when, mm. whenever they need. Are you moving to Japan by yourself, or are, are any of your parents joining you? Oh, no, I'm moving by myself. Ooh, big boy moves. Big boy moves now. Yeah, I have to grow <laughs> up and get out of the house now. What, what's the one thing you're most nervous or scared about? I mean, are, are kite is just like kind of worrying you a bit about moving to a new country all by yourself. Uh, yeah, definitely it's more on the mental and emotional uh, side. Just because, you know, the anxiety, the fear, mm-hmm. um, it's all there. Um, especially when you're living alone and you have no one to, you know, uh, physically just, you know, talk to and uh, keep you company. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's definitely going to be a big factor, though it wouldn't seem like it. It's more on that aspect which uh, that I'm concerned about. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, it's more that than the actual game because in the game you can actually just keep working and just keep developing and being a be- uh, and be a better player every single day. And you mm-hmm. can actually do something about it, and it's harder to do something uh, when it comes to you know the things that are hard, like 
going to Japan or, you know, having someone there. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I, that's one of my fears, definitely. But so that that's sort of on the the major major scarier side of it, moving by yourself. But what's the one thing? If there's the number one thing that you're most excited about, you know, about this whole new journey of yours? Oof, there's a lot to be excited about, but representing the country and doing something that's uh, outside of my comfort zone, I guess, is something that you know excites me. Uh-huh. Uh, scares me definitely, but excites me more. Uh-huh. How about the, the food? Time. How about the food? Oh, yeah, Japanese food. Oh, okay, then. It's the best. Uh, it's the Japan. best. <laughs> Cuisine. One of the top three. Top, top three. Yeah, definitely. What's What's the other two? Um, Persian. Mm-hmm. And Filipino, of course. Okay. Yeah, you gotta put Filipino up there. But anyway, so your position, you're actually gonna be listed as a shooting guard. Um, was Was this your decision? Was it the was it based on the availability of the, the you know, the, the, the players on the team already? Back at shooting guard. And how are you going to transition your game to that position? For me, um, personally, I don't think it would be much of a... It's not a big change in terms of my game. Uh, I, I played the three. Now I'm just... Mm-hmm. I played the three in my whole career and uh, ever since. Three and four. Tapos again, I'm just going to be two. So, a shooting guard. So it's it should be a easier adjustment, but uh, being in the pros, it's definitely gonna be a lot tougher because the guys are way taller, faster, and stronger than you in the league. So uh, you just have to be ready. And I guess it's the management, it's the team's decision to put me in that spot. Yeah. Uh, just because I think that's what they see fit. That's mm-hmm. where they see me playing um, in my best like way, uh, in the best way possible. So. Uh, I just have to trust them and I'm just going to do whatever it takes to help the team win. Yeah. That's you know, a lot of people were expecting uh, straight out of college, you know, just, just like what um, your brother's doing now, that you'd be playing for the PBA. And there are reports saying that you, you actually talked to PBA Commissioner Willie Marshall and you, you sort of asked him for permission before you went overseas. Could you tell us what happened here and like, what, what did you guys talk about? Uh, well, we just talked about basically uh, it's me informing them that um, I've got, uh, I, I was able to get a couple of offers internationally, and I told them that they were able. Good uh, no, I'm just gonna ask permission, basically, just because I know, like, my dad was in the PBA, my brother's a PBA, so it's kind of like respect that you're telling them that you have this uh, unique opportunity that's not given uh, to a lot of people to represent not just yourself but the country as well. So it's something bigger than me, definitely. And yeah, and we kind of agree. Uh, we actually agreed verbally that, yeah, he's going to allow me to play internationally. Mm-hmm. You're the first Filipino import in, in the B League in Japan. And I'm sure uh, out of nowhere, biglang sobrang dadami yung viewers ng B League from the Philippines. Um, but right now, where, where do you see yourself? Are you taking it like a one year at a time thing? Are you, do you have clear plans that, after that one season, you'll go back to the Philippines, or maybe you're gonna stay a little longer. Where, where's your head at right now? I, I have a long-term plan, which, is, uh-huh. which I, I'm not gonna tell anyone. Okay, okay. But, um, definitely, it's you know, uh, I'm gonna take it one year at a time. I mean, what my long-term plan? I mean, like, there's something that uh, uh-huh. I hope in my head will happen, but it's not really final. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's gonna depend on how good I actually perform. Yeah. Uh, the next couple of years, so um, that's matagal pa yon. But this yeah. one is probably gonna be most uh, one season at a time, most likely. All right. There's this thing people say that if you if you tell your dreams or your your wishes and you, you send it out to the universe. Supposedly, the universe is sort of going to help you. Is there anything, is there any element in that long-term plan of yours that you're ready to share now? I said, just, and is it like, oh, I want to be able to play with my brother one time in the same team or anything. I want to play in this league. I want to be able to do this. Is there anything? None. None. <laughs> all right. All right. So, yes, again. Now, now, you know, we're talking about your, your plans for the future, but let's, let's go back. Let's, let's do a... Let's do a short throwback. All right, so I know, I know you're in the car now, so I want to make sure you're still safe, but then I'm going to be showing you. I want to know what was going through your head 
you know, hands down, this is the favorite dunk I've seen in the UAP. So this was against the UST Growling Tigers. Boom! You have this wild tomahawk slam uh, over you. What was going through your head? Was this something that you really, like you practice that I'm gonna do this dunk sometime? In this year, you know, we, we see that we see that pass. It was a, it was a rebound, and it just came out of nowhere. You flew straight to there. And what is going through your head here? Uh, well, I mean, first off, dunking is actually something that obviously, like us basketball players, always try to do. To say that I actually thought it in my head, nah, I, I'm gonna do that in that particular situation is unfair because that whole situation in, in itself is very unique. I was actually out. I was actually running towards the court uh -huh. of USD to defend, but Ike was actually able to grab the rebound. Yeah. So I was going back, and that in turn actually gave me a lot of momentum to actually do that dunk, to be able uh -huh. to lift myself from a pretty far distance, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really expect that. It's more of a uh, in-the-moment type of thing that I was actually going to dunk it just because I felt like I had momentum. So it was in my head, na, oh yeah, I can actually yam this thing, you know? Like, yeah. uh, I have enough momentum to do it, so it just happened, I guess. Yeah, and, and you also you also threw out the three sign. After you dunked, you went like this, and some people were saying, and again, can't you not count? Dunks are only worth two points. But then so someone said that you were, it, it was like a bet? What, what is that? What is this What is this sign for after a dunk? Yeah, uh, so in that particular season, I made a bet with my dad. Well, actually, my dad made a bet with me uh -huh. that every time I get to dunk a ball, he's gonna give me three thousand pesos. Oh wow, really? It was like three thousand because my dad was right in front of me and I saw him. So, <laughs> so that's a shout out. I saw him out. Mm -hmm. I just, you already know after the game, <laughs> I'm getting something. So. Is there is there like a total amount and like how is there something that you have bought with all the money? you have earned with all of those dunks from your dad? Uh, well, actually, from that season, I was able to dunk, like, so much uh -huh. that even... <laughs> You're robbing your own dad. <laughs> my dad. I basically felt like I was robbing my dad, and some of the alumni were like, oh, <laughs> since you've been dunking a lot, like, we'll just pay you. <laughs> like, we'll be the ones to sponsor you. <laughs> no. uh, in the end, like, uh, I told my dad that he doesn't actually need to pay me. Ah, okay. So he never paid you? Well, I uh, mean... He did. Oh, he like, did. He did. A couple of times when uh -huh. I dunked, but uh, when it was like it, when it became like cumulative, it, yeah. it came to a point. Parang nililista na lang yung dunks. Yeah. Like okay, uh -huh. okay, one uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. It was gonna end at the end of the season, na lang. So uh -huh. um, what ended up uh, happening was that I told him that no, it's okay. Like uh, uh -huh. I, I do this for fun and I do it because I like to do it. So and he's the one who pays for your education. Um, your housing, your food. I mean, ever since you were you were born, I mean, I probably he probably realized it was a bad investment now this time. Okay, let's go to another <laughs> highlight. Um, lots of people talk about your dunks, the, the the very flashy things, but this is something, this is one of my favorite plays. This was during the, the finals game. You had a really nice rebound and assist. It always comes from an Anton as he still miss. I, <laughs> I just realized now. So, so you see, so he has a miss over here, which doesn't happen much to man. And then out of nowhere, you sky for the rebound, and then you make this pass while you're falling to the ground, and it, it becomes a crucial three uh, by Matt Nieto. Again, like what, what was going through your head, and you know, how did it feel when you made that rebound, when you made that pass, and Matt drilled the three? Uh, well, there's actually a lot of equations in that uh, very fast frame. That happened. That happened in that very moment. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is that uh, I already know that someone's gonna be there when someone shoots a ball, just because uh, because of principle. Like in our team, when someone shoots the ball from uh, like a jumper or a three-point shot, like there's always gonna be two guys in what we call the pillars, like on top of uh -huh. the court. Yeah, as so you can see, like Matt. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Matt and Anton who are gonna be at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so go to the top, yeah. And they have to stay there when they shoot, just so they would be ready if there's a rebound to make a oh, quick Oh, yeah, I see them. They're both out oh, here. Yeah, they're both out there. So uh, just the moment uh, I uh, mm. the ball, I already know that someone's going to be there. So that's the first spot 
that I looked at when I got the rebound and uh, yeah. Matt was right there where I expected him to be and I just kicked, uh, it, out, uh, kicked it out to him and hit a very crucial uh, game three yeah. three-point basket which that, pretty that was, much uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. started this the whole um, run in that fourth quarter of the game three against the Sun. Yeah, but then it, it helps, you know, you, you know the system. Uh, Coach Tab, one of the best coaches we have here, uh, has a system with, with team play, but it also helps if you have um, superhuman strength. If you have a third year of Vena who's, who's, who's there to rebound. All right, let's, let's go to one more. Your, your finals 30. They, they, talk, they, they, they call you finals 30 because out of nowhere, you know, you're playing good during the, during the season, and out of nowhere during the finals, you just explode. Um, is it something you consciously turned on or well, it's a coincidence that just the finals began so much to win? I'd like to say it was it's a coincidence but it's not. Um, it's premeditated and it's something that has to do with the mindset that I have that in the regular season I'm going to do whatever it takes to help the team get better. And I'm not saying uh, when I mean that I don't mean that in the finals it's only going to be about me. But in the, in the whole pre uh, in the whole elimination round, like uh, I just want to, you know, uh, help my teammates out and just really be able to embrace the system. Uh, sad to say, we dog fight in the finals. Uh, so I always have that mindset of just embracing that opportunity, that moment, especially in the finals. That I'm, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be about who wants it more. So I have that attitude, especially during the finals, and it's just going to uh, escalate yeah. every single time. So, yeah, and, um, it's just a matter of having the right mindset, I guess, and mm-hmm. just changing my attitude from being uh, not really conservative, but, well, yeah, I was being a little bit more conservative uh, in, the, in the eliminations in the elimination round just because we uh we have like a lot the whole team is basically we trust each other that we're gonna do our jobs the right way you're not gonna have to like exert a lot of energy just because like no one's doing their job us yeah someone's not doing their job well so full trust in my teammates definitely and coach staff and the whole team and but in the finals yeah it's, it's a dog fight. Turning it on. Turning it on when it matters. You know, you, you've won three, uh, three UAP championships. You, you, got, you got finals MVP in all three of them. But is there a specific one that, that you know, I, I know that all three championships are very amazing and special to you. But is there one that sort of stands above the rest? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to compare the championships just because you think, uh, yeah, when you experience it again, like it's not going to be as good as the first one. That's what they say, but... Yeah. It's definitely always like a better feeling when you get the championship, um, and it's definitely a different feeling. But in terms of being one of the memorable ones, it's got to be like La Salle, the first mm-hmm. championship that we won, uh, just because of the whole journey that you know we lost the finals before that. Yeah, and La Salle was uh, was pretty much like the the strongest team, uh, even during that uh, that season where we won the championship. Like it's, uh, they had Ben, and they yeah. had guys who were. They had Richie uh, by that time. Mm-hmm. They had Richie, they had Aljun, they had Andre, uh, mm-hmm. and the team was very uh, intact, very confident with Coach Alden. Um, definitely hard to beat, and I'd say the the best season, uh, the best team talaga, even during that season. But uh, yeah, the finals talaga, it's, especially in the game three of the finals. It's really anyone's game. So I guess in that particular time, we really showed everyone that we wanted it and we did it together and trust uh, and by trusting each other. That's what made it memorable. And it was definitely like a surreal feeling. Personally, that's also my favorite uh, championship. It's really nice uh, having that underdog story. Kaya nga even have the... This is the only... This is actually the only championship shirt uh, I, I have shirt. of Ateneo yeah, man, in, in the recent years. Uh, but, but last thing about Ateneo, what's the one thing you're going to miss most about playing for the blue and white? It's tough, a lot, but just seeing everyone during the game. 
mm-hmm. seeing the support and the love that you get every time you make a basket, every single time that you're about to go in and the babo just starts uh, starts off with that cheer, I forget. Very in sa puso na song, that first one. Yung intro na yun, yung taga 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 Yeah. That <laughs> part, <laughs> like, never gonna stop. Like, it's always gonna feel like Mm-hmm. Uh, like the like the first time, every single time you hear that, then you go out, and the crowd just goes off. Like I guess that's the feeling that I'm gonna miss the most. Like when you go out of the dugout and everyone just starts shouting and getting crazy. I need you to be completely honest, as honest as you can be. Um, who would win in a one versus one basketball game? So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be throwing names of basketball players, and then if that person were to go up against you. Um, let's, let's say winner's ball up to 10, one shot per possession. Who is going to win? 3D Ravenna first versus Matt Nieto. 3D Ravenna. For sure. For sure? Is it a clear, is it a clear win? If you were to yes, give a score, sure. if you were to give a score, first to 10, what? what's the score? No, first off, Matthew hates playing one-on-one. Oh, he does. <laughs> I already know that he's not going to even, he's not, he's not even going to try. If you had to give a score, like well, how many points would he score against your ten? Like two. <laughs> two max. Okay, okay. How about um, Teddy Ravenna versus Kobe Paras? Oh, this one, this guy's win. near your side. You're, you're, you'd win. You'd still win. What's the score for this one? Five, like a five ten. Uh-huh. Max. Oh, okay, it's a little, it's a little more, but it's still a, it's still a, <laughs> it's still really lopsided. Okay, how about? You versus Juan Gomez de Guiano. Me. Still you. What's the score for here? Like a five. Five. Also a five. Okay. Okay. How about uh, Richie Rivero? Me. What's the score? <laughs> like a five. Like a five. Wow. No one, no one is. Okay. Now let's go to someone a little, a little closer to you. Okay. How about Simanong naman? 30 Ravenna versus Kifa Ravenna. You would win. I'd win. I'm sure you guys have played one-on-one um, ever since the lockdown. You can't really go out that much. Uh, well, we have players in the house, and we play mm-hmm. one-on-one uh, a lot uh, with the guys that are working out in the house as well. So mm-hmm. I'm the, I'm always the winner. Is it always and like? Is it always you? One like wins? one out. Of, he won. He won. Like one out of probably twenty games we've played. Wow. We're like four, four uh-huh. guys that do one ones. Usually, sometimes even more, and it's one to five um, per game. So in a matter of like twenty games, he's one one. Wow, just one game. Wow. D- do you joke about this? Like, hey, I'm the better man. And he cheated on it. Like he was scoring on the guys that were like. So it's supposed to be like one on one on one. Ah, okay, okay, uh, yeah. Like when I make one, like another defender's gonna come in. Mm-hmm. And he always just scores in the other defenders. Like so the small defenders. Um, I wouldn't say that it wasn't my fault because I let myself get beat. But there's definitely something in there that contributed. Like it was, <laughs> it was it's hard. If you were defending him. One on one on one. Yeah. If it were like a one on one thing, I think it would be a... For sure. For sure. Last but not the least. 3D Ravenna versus Michael Jordan right now. So, 30 versus a 57-year-old Michael Jordan. Would win. I mean, like, come on. Like, he's 57. But he's Michael Cut Jordan. the guy off some slack. But like, he's Michael Jordan. <laughs> he is Michael Jordan, but he's 57. I mean, uh, personally, I wouldn't even go up against someone who's that old. Uh-huh. Just because I don't want to. Respect. Yeah. But I would. I, I'd give it to Michael. Of course, he's a fucking goat. Like, oh, so, sorry, you'd, like you'd still let him win? You no, he like, will win. Oh, you, he's, he's oh, you goal. think he will? Okay, wow. Is this something that is? Is it a sweep also, or do you think it's gonna be a close game? I hopefully get the score on him. Huh. Okay. Hopefully, I mean, I'd as be long as you, happy as if you I get, get a score. score. Yeah. Yep. You, you can you can take can that. Say they got one yeah. against Michael. That's right. That's right. You can take it to the grave. All right now, you know, I was talking about some people that you actually were part of this um, home jam dunk contest that happened just a few days ago. What happened in your last dunk? What was that side step? <laughs> final dunk of yours oh yeah well i mean it's basically just to like make everyone happy you know it's uh-huh. that whole dunk uh the whole home dunk uh the dunk contest was actually meant for for everyone to 
just enjoy. You know, they're all we're all in uh, a very tough and unique time right now. Yeah. And without sports, it's definitely harder, just because we have nothing to watch. So I just wanted to give them something that they could laugh about or they could you know enjoy watching. Mm-hmm. And, and the fans really did love it. I, I could see uh, all the comments, everybody talking about it. Uh, but you know, I, I know you're gonna have some training in a bit. But before I want to go, I just want to talk about your shoe game. I'm not sure if you remember, but we had this class back in college. I think it was some random Filipino class, and I remember the night, the morning itself. The morning itself, I was looking uh, on Instagram. Then I see this new release of I think it was the OVO Jordans. It was, but it was, it was a collaboration between Drake and Jordans. And I thought, wow, this is a nice pair of shoes. And then you see the price, and I'm like, okay. I'm just going to keep dreaming that I'm going to get these shoes. And then that morning, swear to God, I go to class. I'm looking down my notes. And then right beside me, I see some big-ass feet and I see the, the shoes. I see the shoes that I saw on Instagram just a few hours ago that I don't know if it has been released or whatever. Then I look up, of course, it's Third Year Ravenna. So I know that you are one of the people with the strongest <coughs> shoe games. Um, how do you what 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 are shoes to you? Like is it a is it like a religion to you? Is it something you just people just keep giving you for free? What 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 do shoes mean to you? Well, I guess uh, for me uh, personally, I wouldn't consider my sneaker game strong, but I uh, I would consider my love for sneakers strong. Um, and it's basically because we grew up uh, in an environment like when I was in Ateneo grade school, na we were all in uniform. Mm-hmm. And uniforms stop us. The only way we could stand out is that if we wear like shoes, you know. And everyone there was, and during that time, like uh, it started off when I was probably my grade five or grade six, where the whole Nike SB thing blew up, yeah. and everyone had their own. But I actually got so much crap, so much shit, uh, just because I wasn't able to afford one, and I couldn't ask my parents for anything really? because it wasn't my birthday. So I had to buy like a fake pair. Oh, uh, you did! <laughs> yeah, I bought a fake pair of shoes, and I uh, I got shit for it just because you know they saw it was fake. Like I uh, oh, they, they, they wanted to see what it was like, huh? They could tell. They could tell that it was. Fake. Yeah, they could tell definitely. Oh. Um, God. but yeah, uh, but from that moment on, I told myself, nah, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna work till I get to a point where I'm just gonna get whatever sneaker I want. Yeah. When I want it, so okay. the same sh- uh, the same shoe that I wanted in grade school that I couldn't buy, um, was you have all the colors now. No, no, was the <laughs> shoe that I bought ten years later. The same exact shoe. Oh. Uh, Twenty nineteen, the the Miss Pac Man SBs. It was actually worn by Bullet Pa. Like mm. I was en- I en- Bullet. I was like super en- envious of him just because he had that, and he was using it for PE Pa. So I was like, oh wow. Nah. I had that, and I was like, "Yeah." Uh, I I realized yeah, no, twenty no, uh, twenty nineteen when I actually started to have a little bit of money uh, on my own. Nah, yeah, like you know what? Just cause like I wanna like tell myself that I uh, I'm in a stage right now where you know I can do this, and I promised myself that I would be here. So I bought the same exact shoe that I couldn't buy like 10 years ago and I bought it off a resale for like $500 and I, I was like I don't even care how much <laughs> nice the story I'm gonna get it yeah. whenever uh, even it was on eBay pa. so I was like wow uh, yeah just send it here so I got the same exact pair wow listen, from, from that from wearing fake shoes to wearing um, unreleased shoes you know I, I can I agree with you there the love for sneakers doesn't always equate to the sneakers that you have because of like how much you have, the connections you have. And I just want to flex this. I got my first ever pair um, of Jordan. So I got, I got the Chicago Black though. Uh-huh. Um, what would be your tips to somebody just entering the Jordan game? Because I know that some people can get lost in the sauce. You know, you can, you can start losing all your money if that's all you think about. I know that you, you're a big fan of the Jordan ones. What, what tips do you have someone, for someone entering the Jordan game just now? Personally, I would tell them, to, uh, you know, you love your shoes. Um, like, especially the new ones, like the whole uh, collab thing going on that's, you know, been exploding. Uh, but it was, an, it was an old concept, a very, uh, it, it actually happened in the 80s. Now. But um, for someone who's starting to collect sneakers, just keep collecting. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Just get whatever you want to get. Because I wouldn't tell you that um, you should get, uh, you know, certain pairs of shoes. Yeah. But for me, that's where you learn to actually uh, pick which ones, uh, which shoes that you, you want to get instead of just getting whatever comes out. So that's when you actually develop the taste for getting good sneakers instead of just getting whatever is coming out. And uh, yeah, that's my advice. Just keep collecting. Cause Do you know um, how many pairs the, of shoes? You learn the process. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, do you know how many pairs of sneakers you own? How many pairs of shoes you own? I definitely uh, decluttered and gave away a lot of oh. shoes, but combined with my brother, I guess, we, we came to a point where we had about 760. Wow. I think that was the count. Yeah. But what, what's your shoe size? I'm sure it's it's pretty big. It's more it's 12, above 10. Uh, 12 oh, for man. walking and 13 for ball. Oh, man. I, I don't have any hope with getting the donations anytime soon. I'm a size 10. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Okay, now that we're talking about shoes, talking about fashion, the last I actually thing, wear okay. size 10.5 shoes, just so you know. Oh. Oh, okay. Just because, are, you gonna, you know, are you asking for my shoes? Fits. <laughs> like, if, if it's nice, uh -huh. and uh, like there, I have a pair of Chuck Taylor Chinatown bootlegs, like Ooh. Chinatown Market bootlegs, which I have never seen anyone else in the Philippines wear. Yeah, it's uh, the one with the smiley face. Yeah, the one with the smiley face, the one that the Bron wore. Uh -huh. uh, I, I haven't seen anyone wear that out here yet, but it's a size ten point five, and I I don't care. Uh, what size it is I'm gonna it doesn't put my hurt. Just it doesn't hurt. Tita isan mo lang talaga eh, cause you know it's yeah, yeah. I think I guess that that's that's what makes me a sneaker addict and a sne uh someone who actually loves his shoes. Uh -huh. So I'm saying like if I give you a pair, you should be able to rock a size twelve or size thirteen. Uh huh. Uh huh. For sure. All right. Now we're talking about fashion and tiis. Okay. Um, you're somebody na speaking of tiis guapo talaga. What is going on here? We were talking about your highlights a while ago. Now we're gonna go to some of your fashion highlights. Okay. So we have a picture here with Tito Boy. What is this? What is this ensemble you have put on? You have some. Um, you have a fancy carpet <laughs> as, a, as a shirt. You have some skinny jeans and these nice. Uh, what did you go first? The leather shoes. Uh, it it doesn't look like you fail in comparison standing next to Tito Boy. What what is it? Did you pick this outfit out? That's exactly why I chose that outfit. I already knew I was gonna be in a show where Tito Boy is, and knowing Tito Boy, who's my manager, he gets pretty wild with his uh, outfit. Does, so yeah. I just wanted to match the same energy uh, with him. So that's what I chose. Yeah, and, and at least, you know what, you're probably one of the people who can rock this off and this this haircut that I still don't understand to this day why it became a thing. But you know what, if you have... They hated on me when I started doing it, <laughs> no one did it here. Yeah, now yeah. now everyone started doing it the year after. So, you know. Trendsetter, baby. Uh -huh. Would you say people, Tito Boy's shoe funny. game is strong? Would you Sorry, would you say Tito Boy's shoe game is strong? He has some um, uh, high cut... What's this leather, dark green boots? How would you rate his shoe game? Oh, well, I guess it's uh, shoes. It's hard to compare shoes like that because, first off, it's not a sneaker. Uh -huh. uh, and, it's high, and it's high fashion. So it's like a different taste, a different culture that, of uh, that he's in. So I, it's, it's hard to say that uh, his, well, obviously, it's strong. But it's for like you know he's more high fashion. Yeah, yeah, and he can rock off the he, he can pull off the ripped jeans. You know what? Even if he's um, a little older than us, he can still rock it off. Okay, just two more outfits. This That's one. What is point. going on here? I've never understood the thing with this bulletproof Counter Strike. Um, what is it? A bag? Is it a? Is it like a front pack? What? What is the body bag? Why? Well, it actually started off like by Matthew Williams of Alik Studio. He's the one that made those things famous. Uh-huh. Uh, it was actually in Drake's video, Yung Tussie Slide. Yung oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jacket, that's Alik's shit. Uh -huh. So that same brand was the one that started that. And I guess I picked it up early because uh -huh. I, I was rocking that since I started rocking the body bag like 2018. Uh -huh. Do you and have just, anything? What do you keep there? Is there um like like... Do you have floss, hanky, rosary? What, what do you keep? What does 30 <laughs> keep in his body bag? 
I put my wallet and my phone there just because. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow. Just okay. So it has something. Okay, and one last. This one is my favorite. Okay, it's it's kind of weird. It's an old picture. So you have a cardigan. So this is in the Blue Eagle gym, which is very yeah. hot, but you're wearing a cardigan. And a gray shirt yeah. and some blue shorts. Well, what, what what's going on here? Yeah, well, that actually was for a magazine, like a front cover magazine. Oh, shoot. okay. Did you pick so, this? Um, I didn't pick the outfits, so I had to shoot with my brother. That was, uh, I don't even know when that was. Probably like 2016 uh, or something, 2015. Uh -huh. I guess. Oh, this was the earlier uh, 30. Yeah, and it, and it's and the outfits aren't mine. Like I didn't pick the outfits. They don't belong in my closet too, so I couldn't say that it was me. Yeah. Okay, do you pick your outfits when it when it comes to like, because you know how NBA players have this, like like everybody looks at what Russell Westbrook gonna wear. You do it all yourself. Wow, wow! From you know from the pink hair uh, to the to the nice sneakers to the very very outrageous yet super classy at times on huh, outfits. Well, third year, Vena, thank you very much for your time, man. Uh, I know I know you got training and. We're very, and you know what? Um, on behalf of you know all the basketball fans uh, in the Philippines, people you've went to school with and everything, we're very very excited, and of course very proud because wherever you go, we're gonna feel like you know we're not related. But anytime we see a Filipino on the international basketball stage owning, we're gonna be like, oh yeah, like that's my ano kababayan ko yan. Like I feel we feel <laughs> yeah. that connection, man. Very, so, that's very Filipino. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? Thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate the love. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me, bro. Is there any last thing you want to say? I mean, about about your plans, um, about what people can expect from you uh, in the near future. I'd rather show it, but thanks, Anton, mm -hmm. definitely for having me on. And yeah, I mean, it's been crazy how fast time is. I mean, I grew yeah. up with you basically uh, yeah. ever since grade yeah. school to college. Like we've been in each other's like world. So uh -huh. uh, I remember going to your house in grade six. Months, yes, so, uh, for my birthday. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah A long time birthday. ago. So uh, yeah, definitely. Time flies, and I am very proud of you, bro. Like, have doing your own thing, making noise, and yeah. Uh, good luck and everything, bro. Thanks for having me, man. I'm always thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Once again, and thank you for everyone who's supporting all the Philippines. Sorry, I have breath, but go, go, yeah. go. All, I just want to thank you all and I'm doing this all for you.